All right, I am here with my dear friend, Joe Laurie. Um, hi, Joe. Hi. And uh, Joe and I, uh, we've known each other for a while now. I discovered her not long after I moved to New York City. And she was just this incredible singer who kept showing up on at, at gigs of the gigs of many of my favorite musicians, um, often singing background vocals and playing something or another, <laughs> some percussion <laughs> instrument, and doing the most spectacular things vocally. And then, of course, I discovered um, Joe that um, you're an exceptional uh, leader uh, in your own right, singer songwriter. Um, your background it seems to me is primarily in jazz, but you can sing anything and you do sing anything. Um, I'll try. And, yeah, and I'm, I'm so thrilled. I've been very fortunate to have you on three of my records now. And this is a fun story. I'm sure many folks out there are already aware of this, but you and I really got to know one another when we were singing Back Up for Sting. Mm -hmm. um, when you got me at the gig. Yeah, that's my big claim to fame. But uh, no, he, he, he was right to choose you and keep you on for six, seven plus years. How long were you sort of full time with Sting? It took seven years to get that itch and that's when I got booted. Oh, no, I didn't get booted, but yeah, it was um, seven, seven years pretty steadily. And, you know, it's still, I still moonlight there every, every now and then. Yeah, for, for sure. You're in the family. I mean, he sang at your wedding, which I think is incredible. And through working with him, you got to check off a few of your own bucket list artists. You sang with Peter Gabriel, um, mm -hmm. Paul Simon, and then a whole list of other people um, who would kind of fly into various events that Sting would host. Um, but anyway, I want you to tell us about yourself. Um, you are truly one of the most spectacular musicians, artists, singers I've ever known. Um, and you're, you're, I mean, as a, as a technician, as a technician, I think you're um, extraordinary. Um, but what's wonderful about, you know, who you are and what you do, it's never without heart. So those, those two things are always beautifully in balance. And I would love you to share a little bit about your background, musically speaking. Oh, well, um, I think, my background comes from like making music as a family and then being in choirs. Choirs are a really big part of my background. And so I think that's why I really prefer to sing in kind of a team atmosphere <laughs> as you know, I, I'm also really lazy, so I don't like being a leader. It's way too hard. It's, you know, I do have my own projects and stuff, but my favourite thing is actually to work on other people's music and be given a challenge and say, okay, well, what can you do with this and how can you, how can you be part of making my vision hopefully better um, or bringing my vision to life and ideally in a way that I, you know, that somebody hadn't thought of or that excites them and makes them excited about their own music. That's kind of, that's what gets me excited. So I guess, you know, I sort of see my, my musical personality, even though I'm a singer, um, my musical personality is more sideman. That's where I thrive. I think that's where I feel the happiest and the most fulfilled, I think. Um, that's cool. Yeah. And I really love... I love a challenge. So I do like, I do like tricky music <laughs> sometimes to my detriment. Um, but I really do enjoy, enjoy some of the challenges that I get to try to meet in the contemporary and modern jazz sort of world. Um, so that's quite, that's quite fun. That's, yeah. that's sort of where I'm at at the moment, but it, you know, it changes from time to time. I mean, that, that said, my, my holy grail dream pinnacle, I can die happy now gig was uh, singing backups for Sting. So it's, you know, music is music and good music is good music. So I like to do it all if, if I can. Totally. And he's, I mean, he's so sophisticated um, as a musician. And, you know, I, the reason I fell in love with his music was because of the jazz musicians that he had involved in his band, like Kenny Kirkland and Branford Marsalis. Um, but anyway, uh, you do enjoy challenging music, that's for sure, and you excel at it, and that's also why you've attracted musicians like Fred Hirsch, um, who we were chatting about before we went online officially here, um, and you were telling me this 
amazing story that you were about to record with Fred and then everything happened with COVID-19. And within hours, you were on a flight to Australia where you are now in Adelaide. Um, so so you're, you're, you, how long ago did you arrive there? This is day 10 of our mandatory, very strictly observed quarantine. Yeah. So um, my husband and toddler and I are trying to weather our cabin fever. I mean, it's quite, we have a little courtyard out here, so we're getting a little bit of sunshine. We're allowed to go out in the, yeah. in the backyard. And um, yeah, we had fully expected to remain in Brooklyn where we live. Um, we're expecting another baby and we were going to, do all that uh, in in Brooklyn in a couple of months, but then you know things started to go south pretty fast, and we realised that if we weren't going to get out within a couple of days, we weren't going to get out at all. So yeah, within 20 hours, we had packed up our lives for don't know how long it's going to be, but we're down in Adelaide, um, where it's I mean it's pretty serious everywhere as as we all know, and everyone's taking it very seriously. But we we do feel pretty lucky to be able to come come somewhere where it's perhaps not, the hospitals won't be quite as overcommitted as they might be in New York City at the yeah, moment. Yeah, a little less populous, for sure. With yeah. knowing that I have to go to a hospital in eight weeks' time, which might be <laughs> climax of the entire nightmare, it's good to, good to know that, um, that I'm somewhere a little quieter. For sure. And um, yeah, I wanted to actually ask you guys, now Will Vinson is your husband. Mm -hmm. um, for people who don't know, Will is another incredibly multi-talented musician, multi-instrumentalist. Um, I'll never forget hearing him play piano on one of your albums <laughs> and being totally knocked out because I, I had no idea. I should have guessed because he writes great music. But um, he just put out an album of his own, right? I saw it's on vinyl. Um, he did. I mean, he's a frustrated pianist. He he always wanted to be a pianist, um, but he had a few wrist issues early on, and the saxophone was a much more forgiving instrument for him physically. Um, yeah. But he is, in many ways, a frustrated pianist. So his latest project is what's well, called um, 441, which is referencing the fact that it's there's so there's 88 keys on a piano and five five pianists on that record plus him so um so it's uh, it's with gonzalo rubel Carver and fred hirsch and sullivan fortner and gerald clayton uh and tigran hamasian did i miss it? Is that five you yeah i did the closest friend. anyway so it's pretty it's pretty cool that's amazing and I have to ask, I mean, this is maybe sort of the obvious question, but I'm actually curious myself. Um, have you and Will ever dreamed of like collaborating directly on a project? Like, is there a family band <laughs> album in, in, in the future? It would be unbelievable. Um, my, I don't think my dad ever lets a conversation go by without mentioning how good it would be if we could do a Johnny Dankworth, Cleo Lane type situation, um, which, We'll never have. Uh, but <laughs> we've, you know, I've featured on some of his records and he's featured on some of mine. And we, the, the closest we have to a collaboration is a really fun little group, uh, a quartet that we have with Kate McGarry and Keith Gans, who are another husband and wife duo, and that little band, which we have so much fun with. We haven't done tons of stuff together, but... Um, when we do appear live, the band is called Key Party, and uh, <laughs> and we have a really great time. So we do like we do like that context. But we we've done one we've written one song together. Um, but I think we're I think I don't know how compatible we are in that particular scenario. We both have very strong ideas, and and um, I think. Uh, you know, the deference that both of us have when we're working with other people's projects sort of disappears when we're <laughs> with each other. I love it. You guys are amazing. So, but you have three of your own solo albums out, right, Joe? Yeah. I Want to Be Happy, Taking Pictures, and... and the Yes. 
And, and then there's some B-sides. There's a little sort of secret EP. Oh. That is not available except at gigs, but I don't do any anymore, so. <laughs> wow, that's exciting. I, I, even I didn't know about that. Um, well, so I do want to ask you a couple more things. I don't, I don't want to take up too much more of your time because I know that you've been very gracious connecting with me while you have a lot of things going on in yeah, quarantine. We're so busy with quarantine. <laughs> um, but I have been asking people, you know, kind of because the album's called Out of Dust and we're in this strange time where I think a lot of people are having their own sort of out of dust experiences. What are you guys doing to stay sane right now? Um, you know, as a family, are there any little tips or, you know, pearls of wisdom you can offer things that have been working for you guys on the home front? Well, we're really hoping to start making a bit of music soon. Um, Will is getting some practice done. I'm not so much cause I don't have an instrument, but as soon as well, I mean, I have this instrument, but I would love to have a, I'll have my, guitar and uh, hopefully we'll have a piano in a few days when we get out of quarantine and we're hoping to start making some music so that'll definitely be a sanity making um exercise um you know we're trying to we're trying to treasure and make the most of the fact that we have all this in, intense time to spend with our daughter who's nearly two and a half and um it can be challenging being not able to go out of the house but um we're really sort of appreciating well first of all just a, can't believe how she's coped with all of this just uprooting everything and a 30 hour travel like 30 hour journey here and then into a total quarantine situation where she's not out, allowed out the front door and just watching her sort of flourish and and being able to look at her so closely without a break is a really precious thing. And I think when you can treasure it, it can be, it can be really nice. So I think, um, and I think we're just really appreciating. I'm appreciating given it, it's, it's really scary time for us and a lot of other people financially about what the future is going to hold. Cause all, I don't think there'll be any more, all the gigs are, you know, cancelled for the foreseeable future. And I don't see Same for us. it's going to yeah. be more than a year until things come back, if they do. And that's really scary. Um, so I think we're just feeling unbelievably grateful that we can be here and find a way to, you know, we, we think we'll, we'll survive and we've got a roof over our heads and um, got each other and we're, we've got healthcare and so we're just sort of, I think the gratitude, focusing on the gratitude is keeping us sane at the moment. Also eating, just eating, <laughs> eating all the time. Eating for two. We have, two. We have run out of ice cream, so we're having a little bit of a crisis today, but we're going to see if we can get a delivery. So, yeah. Okay, so love, my last question for you then. Thank you. That was beautiful. Um, Sorry about that. The dishwasher because we I have to run out all the time. Family like noises. On. Ben is mixing something down. It's nighttime here, daytime where you are. So Ben, is, Josh is now asleep. But earlier today, you know, there was all sorts of ruckus in the background. But you are a phenomenal teacher, vocal teacher. I've wanted to study with you. That's actually been a dream of mine. It still is. Um, and so I have to ask. Yeah, I mean, you're really. super busy with two babes um, before too long. But um, firstly, I'd love to know how people can find your music, where they can find you. Um, you're also one of the most entertaining posters. <laughs> like, it, you know, as somebody posting online, you're very, very funny. Um, so where people can find you and your music. And then also, are you going to continue giving master classes or even possibly teaching privately via Skype, that sort of thing? Because I, I know- oh, I think I'm I haven't, uh, because I haven't got an instrument here yet, but next week I'm yeah. hoping to try to set up a plan for doing some of that. Okay. So yes, please. I would love people to contact me about lessons. Um, Fabulous. Uh, because Manhattan School of Music is also on lockdown, I'm able to continue my job there for the moment, which is really nice. Yeah. Um, though it does mean getting up for 5.30 a.m. faculty Ooh. meeting, but that's okay. Um, yeah, you can contact me. You can find me on Facebook or Instagram or my website. I think it's still functioning at the moment. I've got to check what's going on there. Um, and yeah, I'm intending to probably try to do 
quite a bit of teaching online over the next few months. So that'll be um, so that'll be evenings for people on like Eastern time and could do mornings for people in Europe. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks thanks for that. Um, that's going to be something that uh, I'm hoping to do. It's it, it, not just because uh, we need to still make a living, but also um, I think obviously we're all going to have to find mm-hmm. new ways to connect. And this is teaching is something that really sort of nourishes and fulfills me as well. So it's not something I want to stop just because we have to social distance. So. Right. Yeah, no, totally. And actually it's funny because people like yourself would be teaching others remotely anyway in this very kind of format. So I have the feeling you're well set up to handle that. And I am going to just give a little, <clears throat> excuse me, a little plug. I have to tell folks that you, I would witness this on the few gigs that I sang with you and Sting. You actually would help him warm up for the show which was like incredible to watch and I've seen you you know work with so many people and you really do not only have a gift for singing and performing yourself but you have such a gift for communicating and teaching others so I would encourage anybody um, who's watching this I'll include a link to Joe and where you can find her to sign up for lessons because um, yeah those spots are gonna fill up well to bring it back to your to bring it back to your item, uh, your album title. I mean, the reason that I'm fortunate to have the technical background I have is because I had a terrible vocal injury when I was 16 mm-hmm. years old. I had a hemorrhage into my left vocal folds. So I ended up with nodules and oh, out of dust. Um, it was the it was the best thing that ever happened to me as you know as a vocalist. It gave you know having to rehabilitate from that was it gave me the greatest set of tools for the rest of my life. Didn't, didn't feel very fun at the time, but I think, you know, nobody wishes this pandemic was happening and nobody, you know, the the bad things that happen to us and the bad things that happen to others, you know, obviously we want to try to avoid those, but when they do happen, yeah, there's, Mm. there's good that can come out of it. So I hope we'll start seeing, I hope we'll be able to hang on to the, the good stuff out of this. I know uh, it's it's so it's so frustrating that you've made this incredible album, and I'm so excited about it. I was so excited excited when Sugar dropped, and we spent the whole week dancing. My my daughter and I put it on every day, multiple times a day, and danced around the house. And I know so many amazing projects that are coming out at the moment, like Becca Stevens' Wonder Blooms just coming yeah. out as well, and and all these people that have put. You know, you've put so much heart and soul into this over the last two years or more. Um, And it's, it's, this is not the way that we intended to bring these things in the world. This is not the way I intended to bring this thing into the world. But, um, (laughs) and to see the baby bump. Yay. (laughs) But, you know, we're going to make the best of it. And, and yeah, we're going to hopefully make a lot of beauty out of all this dust. So I know that, I know that you will, I know that you have, so I can't wait for other people to, to listen and hear what you've made. Cause it's as always, unsurprisingly, it's yet another Lila B. Ali masterpiece. Oh my gosh. Well, folks, <laughs> Joe, you're so kind. Thank, thank you for that. And truly you. Thanks for having me be part of it. It's always a privilege to be part of your music. Aww. I'm always excited to do Aww. it. Well, my gosh, I'm beyond thrilled to have you involved and to do anything with you. We've got some other projects we've sung on together. The uh, holiday extravaganza that happens at Subculture in New York. I think that's, of all the shows I've done over the years, I think that's the one I get asked about the most. Like, when is it coming (laughs) back? When's it coming back? (laughs) Anyway, love to you and the family. Thank you for doing this. I'm sorry we went a little longer um, than expected, but stay safe. and. We'll talk again soon. Do stay safe, everybody. Please stay home if you can. Exactly. We're not messing around. Um, Take care of each other and uh, we'll all get through this. Yay. Love you, honey. Love you too. Bye.